good turnout today, Harry. Yes, Governor. You'd never guess there'd been any controversy over our new highway, would you? Well, from the size of this crowd, it appears that most of your people like the idea now. I'm sure most of them do. But I'll have to admit there are two or three folks out there I never thought would show up today. Even the head of our business improvement committee and the descendant of our founder are here today. Maybe they've finally seen the light. Jack, I sure hope your grandfather Connor's not turning over in his grave at what's happening here today. Well, if he is, Bob, it isn't because you and I didn't fight it all the way. Now that it's built, let's hope we have been wrong. Hello, Ralph. How's the dairy farm? Ah. Haven't we convinced you farmers yet? Nope. But what's done is done. Now, if they'll just cut that ribbon, I can get on in the market and see if this road is worth the trouble it's caused me. Ladies and gentlemen, it's with distinct pleasure today, on the occasion of this important event, to introduce to you the illustrious governor of our great state, the Honorable Theodore White. Thank you, Mayor Spencer, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I compliment you on this large gathering here today. It shows clearly that you, the people of Connorsville, recognize the true significance of this ceremony to each and every one of you. You have had your discussions, even disagreements, about the highway in the public hearing room, on the streets, and in your homes. And I think you'll all agree that such discussions are healthy, for from them comes the majority will. We are gathered here today to dedicate a new highway that represents the majority will of the citizens of your community. One segment of a great national system of highways that one day soon will connect the major cities of our land. You good people of Connorsville are about to reap the benefits Almost Reap the fall. benefits. Let's hope that's the case, Governor. Let's hope the future proves that 18 months ago the right decision was made. 18 months ago. See if you can find Miss Rapp on a seat, will you? We can't have the town's prettiest school teacher standing, can we? meeting will come to order. This is a public hearing on the location of Improve U.S. Route 110 through Connor County in the vicinity of Connorsville. Since federal funds will be used in this project, the law requires a public hearing to discuss the economic effect of the proposed highway location. The law also says that ample notice of the hearing must be given so that all interested parties may appear and be heard. Judging from the size of this crowd here today, I would say that the state's given plenty of notice. Now, as your mayor, I've been asked by the State Highway Department to conduct this hearing. So let's get things started by turning the meeting over to Mr. Paul Jacobson, the State Highway Division Engineer, who will explain the state's proposal. Mr. Jacobson. Thank you, Mayor Spencer. For the record, I'm Paul Jacobson speaking as division engineer for the State Highway Department. Now, as you know, the state is proposing to improve Federal Aid Route 110 in the vicinity of Connorsville. This highway will be part of the interstate highway system created by the Federal Aid Highway Act of 1956. Now, to help you understand our proposal, I'd like to begin my presentation by showing you a short film that will give you some of the background of the current highway program. In this century, America has become a nation on wheels. We ride on wheels to work, to shop, to play, to go about any place we want to go. We depend on wheels to bring us the food we eat, the clothes we wear, the things we use. But when we depend on wheels, we depend also on highways and roads and streets for the wheels to roll on. And therein lies the challenge 
building highways and roads and streets fast enough to keep up with the need. After World War II, the nation began developing a case of acute congestion that cost us millions of dollars a year in time, equipment, and lives. By 1956, there were more than 65 million cars on our roads, with 90 million forecast by 1975. Clearly, it was a time for national action. Congress responded with the Federal Aid Highway Act of 1956, providing the staggering sum of $51 billion to be spent by the states on highway construction by 1971. The most talked about phase of the act is the interstate highway system, a 41,000 mile network of our most important roads. Most of these roads will be four, six, even eight lane expressways constructed for through traffic. They will take the over the road driver from city to city, coast to coast at highway speed even through large population centers. The Federal Aid Highway Act offers relief to the local driver, too, by giving him easy access to his home, work, stores, without interference from through traffic. Billions of dollars will be spent for city streets and expressways and for other highways of the primary system. The farmer, too, benefits directly from the billions allotted for the improvement of state and county highways, as well as the farm to market roads of our rural system. These new highways will have a far-reaching economic impact on the entire nation. They provide a heavy-duty link between all parts of productive America. They are a shot in the arm for cities that have begun to feel the impact of growing downtown traffic congestion. They open up vast new areas for suburban living, and they encourage industry to disperse out of city congestion. They stimulate business and create new jobs, particularly among the nation's road builders, who are fulfilling their tremendous responsibility with specialized equipment and modern techniques to build roads of the highest quality at the lowest cost. They stimulate business, too, in the industry supplying the road builders, manufacturers of heavy equipment, explosives, aggregate, steel, concrete, petroleum products, chemicals, and many others. They create other jobs and business opportunities in related fields, too. Car, truck, and bus manufacturing, as well as services catering to the motor traveler. Perhaps most important of all, they will save lives, bringing about at least a 50% reduction in the death rate on major highways. State highway officials charged with the responsibility of designing and building the new highway system are actually planning into every mile all the factors that mean safety. Controlled access, for example, the most important factor that promotes safety by eliminating crossroads, private entrances, traffic signals, and grade crossings. Properly planned median strips to separate traffic. Wider traffic lanes that take into account highway driving speeds. Added lanes to handle increased traffic volume. Wider, firmer, well-stabilized shoulders to provide adequate extra roadside lanes for emergencies smooth, easy curves and gentle grades to ensure adequate sight distances, and bridges and overpasses over railroad tracks and intersecting highways. Of course, all highway planners recognize the safety value of such factors as adequate lighting at critical points, easy to read highway signs, modern electronic equipment such as the type that turns on reduced speed signs in bad weather, or even removes ice from key spots automatically. Important, too, are such good maintenance practices as inexpensive full-scale ice removal with calcium chloride, drainage maintenance, and weed eradication. But the road to better roads is not easy. There are many problems, notably antiquated state laws left over from horse and buggy days, laws that must be brought up to date rising land prices, greatly increasing the cost of future highways unless the land can be purchased and set aside now, and the shortage of trained highway engineers. However, the solution to all the problems lies most of all in public understanding. For only when each citizen becomes better informed about his state's highway program, only when he helps develop the popular support so essential to highway progress, can the nation meet the highway challenge so the better, safer roads of tomorrow will become the roads of today.
That gives you an idea of some of the factors we considered in arriving at the recommendation under discussion today. Now, this is the highway system presently in Connor County. This is U.S. Route 110. The state proposes to improve U.S. Route 110 with a controlled access highway that'll be part of the interstate highway system. Present Route 110 will be widened from two to four lanes, divided by a median strip, and the alignment we brought up to present day standards. Now, at this point, we propose leaving present Route 110 and bypassing the town of Connorsville. There will be easy, convenient access to and from the new highway with adequate signs. We also propose to improve that portion of present Route 110 that runs through Connorsville to widen the pavement from 18 to 22 feet and to correct the alignment in several places. We believe Route 110 offers the best, most economical path for the new interstate highway through Connor County. Relocating it elsewhere would mean excessive land costs, innumerable right-of-way problems, and greater construction costs. Now, our decision to make Route 110 a controlled access highway is based on these traffic count figures. About 8,000 vehicles use the present Route 110 through Connorsville every day. By 1975, we estimate 16,000 vehicles daily. Now, perhaps that explains why congestion is increasing every day on Main Street and why the accident rate on Route 110 has become one of the highest in the state. Now, our traffic count points out another fact. Of the 8,000 vehicles that travel Route 110 each day, only 1,500 are destined for Connorsville. The other 6,500 are merely passing through. Therefore, we're recommending that the new highway bypass the town in the belief that it offers the most advantages both to Connorsville and to the state. From your point of view, it'll keep Main Street free of the excessive congestion caused by through traffic. It will relieve local people, especially children, of the hazards of through traffic. And it'll keep through traffic off the street in front of the new elementary school. From the state's point of view, it'll give through traffic a shorter distance to travel without getting tied up in business district traffic. It eliminates hazardous curves and it costs less than buying the additional right-of-way necessary if we did go through town. Now, we've studied the situation carefully and believe sincerely that our recommendation is in the best interest of the most people. That concludes my presentation, Mayor Spencer, and thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jacobson. Well, you've just heard the state's proposal. Is there anyone who... Bob Harris, you look like you have something to say. You bet I have, Mayor. I think Mr. Jacobson is forgetting. Bob, would you identify yourself for the record? Oh, uh, I'm Robert Harris, owner of Harris's Drive-In Restaurant, and I'm speaking as chairman of the Committee on Business Improvement of the Connersville Chamber of Commerce. I think Mr. Jacobson is forgetting there's lots of us in this town who make our living from people driving down Main Street, seeing our signs and stopping. What we need is more people driving down Main Street, not less. If you don't have traffic, you don't have business. Take me, for example. I got four men working for me, and they got families to feed. If I don't get business, those families don't eat. So that's why I say, speaking for the Chamber of Commerce, if there's any highway improvement to be done, let's improve the roads that bring more people into Connorsville. Jack, you wish to say something? I'm Jack Connor. I'm a businessman, too, and I'd like to say a few words as an individual, backing up what Bob Harris just got through saying. My family's been around Connorsville a long time. My grandfather started this town. The rest of us Connors have helped it grow. I think it's the best little town in the state. This town was made what it is because of the highway running through it. I don't think anybody can deny that. Route 110 brought people into town to shop and to market their farm goods. Of course, none of us ever got rich, but uh, most of us are right comfortable. 
Now the state comes along and wants to build a bigger and better Route 110. And instead of bringing it through Connersville, where it'll do the most good, they want to go chopping up a lot of farmland outside of the town to fix it so that people won't have to come to Connersville. I say that's wrong. I say the road should come through town the way it's always done. Mr. King. I'm Ralph King. I run the King Dairy Farm out west of town. And I've got plenty to say, too, about this highway. I figure there's something wrong when a man's got to give up his farmland for a road he can't use when the road he does use needs fixing so bad. Now, you're planning to put this big new super highway smack dab through my farm so as folks can get from one side of the county to the other ten minutes faster and you're not planning for me to drive on it from my farm. Now, is that right? Yes, it is, Mr. King. But the traffic load on Route 110 prohibits us from permitting any private entrances. You'll be able to get on the new highway, though, by driving just a short way down Route 134. I suppose I could do that. And that's part of what's griping me. I don't see why I should have to drive two to three miles out of my way down a dusty road full of chuck holes to get onto a new road that runs not more than 200 yards from my house. Well, I don't blame you for complaining about 134, but I can tell you it's on our federal aid secondary road list, and very shortly it'll be improved. Well, that's some good news, but I still say it's wrong to take a man's farmland for a road he can't use. <laughs> Mr. King, the hardest part of being a highway engineer is explaining to people why we have to take their land for a new highway. Believe me, we're the first to admit that we must inconvenience many good people. But it's our job when we plan new highways to try to do the most good for the most people at the least cost and inconvenience. As I said before, the state believes the bypass around Connersville is in the best interest of the most people. Well, it seems to me, Mr. Jacobson, that there's too much thought being given to other people. What about us right here in Connersville? Well, maybe I can help answer that question. My name's Henry Loomis, editor of the Connorsville Courier, but I'm speaking as chairman of the Traffic Improvement Council, which Mayor Spencer formed last year. Now, first, I'd like to say that our group agrees with the state's recommendations. Now, the improvements proposed for present Route 110 through Connorsville fit in perfectly with the Master Street and Highway Plan that we've worked out for Connorsville. And we feel there are some very good reasons why this bypass will be of great interest to all of us. Now, you've already heard some of them from Mr. Jacobson, but there are others. Now, do any of you realize that a controlled access highway through Connersville would mean a barrier dividing the town in half? The Traffic Improvement Council has studied similar situations in other towns. And we feel that the economic development of Connersville will be stimulated by this proposed bypass. And the business will actually increase. How's that, Henry? By keeping people away from town? Yes, sir, Jack, exactly. By keeping those out who didn't plan to stop here anyway. Now, what good do through drivers do your business if they don't stop? Plenty of them stop at my place. Well, Bob, I'll admit you may be an exception. But generally speaking, through traffic adds nothing to Connorsville but the bumper-to-bumper -bumper congestion which is already choking us to death. Now, if we can get rid of excess traffic, we'll find that Connersville can take a deep breath again. And people who want to shop here will. And the lack of congestion will make others want to come. And they'll be the ones who'll drive by your sign, Bob. That's all fine and dandy for you people in town, but what about us farmers? Well, I'd say that a new highway could expand your food market potential, both to the north and south. Now, you probably saw the story in route map in last week's paper. You'll be able to drive farther if you want to in a day's time. Now, isn't that so, Mr. Jacobs? Yes, it is. And there's another benefit to you, Mr. King, that nobody else had mentioned today. The economic development that's likely to take place along the new bypass route. Now, other cities have found that industry tends to locate along a good highway outside of town. Land values go up. People move to new suburban homes where they can drive to work in a short time. Mr. Jacobson, Yes, Mayor? Do you have any specific evidence where such development could take place? 
Well, it's already happened along Route 128, the circumferential highway around Boston, and the New York Thruway, the Gulf Freeway in Houston, and in a number of places in California. Of course, we can't guarantee it'll happen here, but there are plenty of examples to show what could happen. And that would have an effect on the property of everyone along the highway, including yours, Mr. King. That's a long time proposition. Right now, I'm a farmer. And I still want to know why you want my land for your road when you could follow the present right of way on land the state already owns. Well, because we feel we must. Now, all of our studies have shown that your land is the best place for the bypass to go. Then you better figure out a way for me to get my 60 head of cows back from the east pasture to the barn for milking with that road blocking the way. Because if you don't, there's going to be a lot of awful hungry youngsters in Connorsville. <laughs> We'll study the situation, Mr. King. And if necessary, we'll modify our plans to include an underpass so you can move your cows. Bob, did you wish to add something? Uh, Robert Harris again. Uh, Mr. Jacobson, I want to get something clear. Is this bypass plan definite or uh, proposal? Well, it's the state's recommendation based on a careful study of all the engineering facts and the social and economic data available to us. This meeting is being held to invite any new information and points of view concerning the economic effect of our recommendation. A record is being kept of your comments and will be thoroughly reviewed before we can take any action. Then someone will consider what I say about the bypass. Yes, they will. Then I'm still against it. Yes, Miss Rathbun, did you wish to say something? Yes, Mayor Spencer, I do. I'm Helen Rathburn, the fourth grade teacher at the new elementary school. I, I came here today just to listen. I didn't expect to say anything. Uh, but after hearing some of the arguments against the new highway proposal, I would like to say just one thing. Uh, well, I'm just amazed at the number of people here who seem to be thinking only about themselves. But isn't there a lot more to it than that? Well, I'm a school teacher. I, I work all day with children. And they're your children. So instead of thinking of just what this new road and, and all the thousands of roads just like it are going to mean to you, shouldn't you give some thought as to what they'll mean to your children? Your children will have a better country to live in because of these new roads. Well, they'll be able to drive anywhere safely, even from coast to coast without fear of in front of them and, and without fear of accidents because the people that are planning and building these new roads are, are conforming to standards such as controlled access and, and wider pavements, more lanes and wider shoulders and, well, all the things that Mr. Jacobson's film talked about. This highway means your children will be able to lead better lives in towns and cities that have had a chance to expand and to grow. From all that some people have said here today, you'd think that Connorsville would just curl up and die if the highway bypasses the town. Well, it seems to me we're just being blind to the facts. Just as we're being blind to our children's future, can't you see that this highway means a whole new way of life for the children? And a way of life that we have a chance to help plan and, and to build. Well, I think that the least we owe the children is the best and the safest life we can give them. And I think that we owe them the right to live long enough to enjoy that life. Thank you very much, Miss Rathbun. Now, is there anyone else who... Henry? Henry Loomis again. I was about ready to give a detailed report on the master street and highway plan to convince this group that the state's proposal is going to help us, not hurt us. <laughs> and so, ladies and gentlemen, it appears Connorsville is joining the long list of cities and towns across the nation 
already benefiting from the highway program. And so it is with great pleasure that I congratulate you as these ribbon cutting ceremonies today officially opens a new chapter in your long and proud history. <laughs>